In this episode of Stonks on Rails, I'm going to be refactoring the job scheduler in my stock scanning app that runs automated tasks for gathering daily and weekly market data. It currently uses a Ruby gem called Rufus Scheduler to trigger these jobs, and this gem works really well except for one main weakness. Rufus Scheduler needs a persistently open program execution thread to run on. If the program terminates, so does it schedule jobs. This setup worked fine when I was running this stock program in an old MacBook. I just open up a terminal window, run the daemon's rake task, and keep the computer running all the time. For the rail server, I just run that in a separate terminal session. But now that I've transferred this program to a more proper Linux server, I'll have to run this more like I would a remote server on the internet, rather than a laptop with a graphical interface, where I can just open up a terminal session. In the new setup, I can take several paths to fix the execution thread problem. I could try to run both the rail server and the Rufus scheduler rate task in a terminal multiplexer like Tmux, but that just wouldn't feel right because running multiple terminal setups is an unusual operational setup, and it's relying on third-party software, the Tmux, to keep the terminal sessions running. I don't think this is a best practice. In my second option, I could run the Rufus execution thread as a background job in Docker, and I think that would work pretty well, but the disadvantage is that I'd have to Dockerize this application, and I'm not sure if I want to do that right now. My third option is I could use a system utility called cron to run the jobs. Cron will spin up an execution thread for each job as needed based on the scheduling. And this is a very standard practice. The most popular Ruby gem for running scheduled background jobs, whenever scheduler, makes use of cron. By the way, Rufus and Whenever are the most appropriate tools for this situation because they're designed to trigger jobs that run consistently at the same time interval, or time schedule. Ruby's other background job tools like Rescue or Sidekick are more suited for processing queues of long lists of jobs that need to be done sequentially, and time of the day doesn't matter so much. So before I go any further, I want to remind you that if you like to learn about software engineering, and in particular Ruby on Rails development, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and hit the like button on this video so that it gets recommended. So in my initial approach to solving this problem, I'm going to switch from Rufus Scheduler in my program to Whenever Scheduler, and use the system level utility cron to run the jobs. So here I am in my program's code. I have a rake task that runs the job threads in the background, and I have this infinite loop going to keep the execution thread running. So what I do is I run this rake task, and then the sleep command in the loop keep this rake task open so that the uh, separate threads that were created in these methods will run at the appropriate times. So let's look into the library here. If you follow one of these methods calls, it takes you to the run daemons library file where the Rufus scheduler threads are created and assign cron strings to set the times that the jobs are going to run. I'd like to clean up this file by moving them into a whenever schedule.rb file and hopefully end up with a more tidy looking code as opposed to this really long messy module with the job time scattered throughout. I like to have all these cron triggers in a more consolidated place. So I'm going to start out doing the basic stuff, gem file, bundle install, and then whenever has a special command named whenevereize that creates a schedule.rb file and puts it in the Rails initializer directory. And this is where you're going to put your list of commands to run and the times. I'm going to first test this out by creating a job that will run a rake task named test output every one minute. And if all is going according to plan, the output's going to be logged to the log file that I have specified. To translate the scheduler RB file into the system cron tab, you need to run the command line whenever update cron tab. This will read the schedule file and install it on the system. So on my first attempt to run this, it raises an error on line 16 of the schedule file, uninitialized constant rails. Well, that's because I'm referencing rails.root.join, which isn't available here in the config file, because a full Rails environment isn't loaded by whenever for this task. I can fix it by 
using file.join instead. And now it works. So let's check how this looks in our cron tab. I'm going to open it up with sudo cron tab e, and this file is empty. The reason for that is because whenever it didn't run this on the super user level cron tab, it did it on the current user that's logged in. So if I do cron tab e without sudo, now we see what whatever did. And there's the command. So now let's check the output of whatever in the daemon's log file. When I tail the log, I see a list of errors here from the times that this job tried to run. And the error is that it can't find a JavaScript runtime installed. Basically, this means that it can't find Node.js. I'm using Node Version Manager, also known as NVM, on the system. So apparently when you're using something node related from within a cron job, the system can't find NBM because the shell commands that load it are in the user's bash profile, and that only gets loaded when a human user starts a terminal session. For one-off commands like these cron jobs, the bash profile loading is skipped, and therefore NBM does not get loaded, and the system can't find Node.js. So I found mainly two options for working around this with cron. I could try to load the bash profile, which will run the shell scripts and find NVM, or I could extract the same code into its own shell script, a separate shell script, and run that before the rake task in the cron job line. Both of these options require me to make modifications in the whenever schedule.rb file to the command being placed in the cron job to run. Actually though, I don't like either of these solutions. I feel like involving shell scripts to preload NVM is so specific to the server environment that it just doesn't feel like a good best practice. I favor setting up code without quirky customizations just to get it to run on the technology stack. I like software that uses universally recognized configuration patterns because for one, it makes the software more agnostic to the DevOps environment, and two, it's easier to maintain because you might forget all the hacks that you did a long time ago just to make those quirky behaviors work out, or somebody else might get stuck trying to maintain code that you wrote and figuring out what you did. So believe it or not, this strange problem with not being able to find Node.js in whenever prompted me to take a second look at the whenever gem competitor, Rufus Scheduler. Additionally, Rufus Scheduler is a little bit smarter too than just the cron utility because it offers features like blocking tasks for running if they overlap. That might actually be useful for a program like this, where if I have a long running job scraping stock market data, there's a chance that a duplicative thread might spin up if the initial job is taking too long. So. I'm going to take another look at Rufus and try to refactor my current code, which uses Rufus Scheduler. Maybe I could make it clean up to be more consolidated in the way it specifies the cron strings. Back to my program now. I'm going to start by making a Rails initializer named RufusScheduler.rb. I'm going to copy and paste the example from the docs and tell it to run that test output rate task. So now we run the Rails server, wait a minute, and we get an error. It couldn't figure out how to build the rake task. And that's because the Rails spring loader doesn't load the rake task at this point when the initializers are run. No worries, I'll just rewrite this test function to not use the rake task and just run the code right here. Now when we go back to the command line and run the Rails server, we can see that it's printing the test output in standard out. And if we try to till the log file of the output, we can see the expected messages being written to the file. So far, so good. Now I'm going to try running the Rails server itself as a background job and see if we get the same results. Right now, as I have this configured, the Rufus scheduler threads get created upon initialization of the Rails server. So if I'm running the Rails server as a daemon, the Rufus scheduler job should run on schedule as well. Let's see what happens. Okay, so nothing happens. The jobs aren't running as expected. What's going on? 
Well, after a few hours of research, I found out that the Rufus scheduler has some problems running when you try to set up the Rails server to run as a daemon. It has to do with the way the Puma web server that powers Rails handles multi-threading. I tried to figure this out, but it doesn't help that the Puma web server project discontinued support for running as a daemon in the latest version. The project maintainers recommend using a third-party utility if you want to do that. So this problem brings me full circle back to Docker. Yes, after thinking about this problem for some time, I've decided that using Docker containers would be the path of least resistance. I can run a stock scanning application interface through a web Docker container and my background jobs in another container that I spin up just for the jobs. Running Rufus Scheduler as a rate task in a process completely detached from the state of the Rails server itself may not be such a bad idea anyway. If we were to scale up a program like this and serve our website in a high traffic environment, we wouldn't want our background jobs being part of the Rails server process. And this is because in a high traffic environment, you might be running multiple Rails servers to deliver the same website with a load balancer in between. If Rufus is part of our initializer, and let's say you have five instances of Rails balancing the web traffic, well, that would mean that your background jobs are running five times at the same time, one for each Rails server instance. If we run Rufus as an independent process via a rake task, that eliminates that problem. It also gives us the ability to shut down the background job process if something goes wrong with that system specifically, and it won't take down the front end facing part of our website. So here I am now writing the Docker file for this application, and now the Docker Compose file. Note that I have to symlink the data directory that I used in the previous episode for caching market data files downloaded from the NASDAQ. Also, note the command for the jobs container, which calls a rake task instead of the Rails server. Now going back to my Rufus scheduler settings, I can get rid of the code in the Rails initializer since we are decoupling this process from the Rails server. I'm going to move any job-related code to the rake task, which will be called by the background job. I'm going to reuse the rake task I used on my old setup for running this program, but just have it run the test output so that we can check that the Docker setup is running as expected. And here, I'm going to run the job daemon to demonstrate that we have the Docker container running the test job as expected. Now that this video is running out of time, I want to quickly show you the end result of several hours of refactoring this code. This is, in general, how I have Rufus Scheduler set up and my jobs. So Docker Compose spins up a container named Jobs that will run the rake task for the job daemons. This rake task defers to a single purpose class called schedule jobs. And as you can see here, I have the infinite loop going to keep the execution thread running. Now this arrangement here for the schedule jobs class is a design pattern called the interactor design pattern, which bundles each unit of your business logic into a single purpose class that has one task for performing that function. Using a method named call is a fairly recognized way of setting up a trigger to activate that class. Now, here you could see that I consolidated all the schedules into a single place in this schedule constant. When this class runs, it'll create the Rufus scheduler thread and then start assigning the times and delegation methods based on the information in that schedule hash. Let's go ahead and take a look at the jobs module that has all of the method delegations. As you can see here, there are methods with names corresponding to the job names in the schedule constant. And a lot of this code here is just logging output so that I can monitor the status of the system from time to time. A lot of the action gets passed on to be performed by other interactor classes. So to help with the logging, I've created another module called job logger which will log both a special log file for the jobs and also send output to the standard out so that I can see what's going on in this program, either by tailing a log file or by attaching to the Docker process where the server will be running. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video useful for comparing your job scheduling options in Ruby. If you thought this was at all helpful, 
please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to see other videos like this. See you next time.